Hassan 105 Party Changes. Uh, this is um, actually quite a short lesson, but maybe an important one. Um, here we are talking about the way to signal property changes to the client and handle them because a networked property actually seems to replace the normal property behavior, so implements its own getter and setter method, and you cannot actually react by implementing, for example, the setter method of a networked property. This will not be triggered on the server, but you have to add um, an event handler or a change handler, uh, which we will do in a second. And this should be used especially to trigger effects or things that should be running on the client later so to 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 trigger things like animations or um, other client state which needs not to be calculated on the server but are more of a toggle thing especially with the um, boolean variable we will we will be using in a second but before we continue just let us add this to git i forgot this for the lesson 103 so we're doing our 103 and 104 this is the the balls the, the shooting thing uh, uh shooting comet so we add all and we uh get status and we just commit lesson 103 plus 104 um, okay, with this out of the way, let's dig into our implementation. So what we want to achieve is that we want to change the color of our player, so the cubes, every time a player shoots, and uh, it should change to, uh, I think it's a, it's a white color, and then slowly transition into a blue color again until it shoots again. So uh, this is what we want to achieve. And this is actually not very complicated. We will go to our player script because obviously we are manipulating the player. And here, instead of uh, um, having a simple networked uh, flag, so we want to have a, a network flag, which uh, just tells us that uh, a ball spawned. So uh, they called it spawned for whatever reason, but okay, I will keep in line with documentation so we we are uh, um, networked sorry we, we're creating a network component i will add the handler in a second and uh, this is uh, a public uh, network pool and they call it spawned i would prefer ball spawned but anyways and um this is what I was just talking about. Um, so on the client, we cannot see, uh, we cannot implement a setter here to see when this network bool actually changed. So if you want to to be notified when this spawned flag changes, uh, we need to add our own kind of setter method, so our own event handler, and this can be done by extending this one. So the networked attribute has an override with uh, uh, a, a, a string, a string group, whatever, networked. So it's an unchanged equals name of. And here we can add the name of a function which should handle the the change of the of the flag. And we will just add this. So it's it needs to be static, by the way. So this is an optimization, if I read this correctly. And uh, the on spawn, on ball spawned method takes a changed type, which wraps our player, which is the implementing class. So we're getting a changed player, changed. We can just call it changed as a property here. And with this change player, we can then uh, manipulate um, all kinds of things. So we have uh, the behavior, and then we want to add a material. So it's not there yet. And we want to change the color to color white. Color white. So on every change of the spawn flag, um, 
we change the color material to white and then we will slowly fade it back to blue so the new one and now we can add our name of the mods bolt here and uh, what's missing here is uh, we actually do not have a material on our player so uh, we will need to, to add this so we will um, add a variable and call it so it's a material material and call it material and then we will uh, create a getter for this one so a private material material and once we have this then the red in here will vanish and with this sorry some lazy uh, damn <laughs> some lazy initialization here so if material sorry material equals zero then we will get this from our prefab so from from our um, object so material equals get component uh, in get component logically in children mesh renderer and this one has the material property so and then we can return this one return the material and this will give us the current material and every time a the, the spawn flag now changes then we will set the current material to white now the last thing that also needs to happen is that uh, basically on um, every tick uh, we need to uh, move back to blue because else it will always be white and since we are starting with white nothing will be visible. So we, uh, for this we override the render function and we lerp from the current material to blue. So material color equals color lerp from from the current color to the color blue, not black, blue, and to have this smooth, we're using our time to delta time. This will be rendered in the client loop, so with every Unity frame. And this is different from our uh, fixed update network script, which happens on every network tick, so every simulation tick. And we are, we are doing this purely client side. All right. And now the last thing to do is we actually have to set this spawned flag at one point. And this happens every time we are spawning a new ball, which happens here. So here we spawn the prefab and afterwards we say spawned equals true uh, no spawn equals not spawned because we never reset so we just toggle this spawned so every time this changes um, the flag changes which will cause the unspawned method to be called which changes the material to white and then in the render function it will slowly move back to blue and this is basically all of the new lesson and we will just test this in a second okay let's test so we are going to just build the thing Here we go. Starting the fusion sample twice. Not necessary, but it's all about networking. We want to see that this is actually visible on both clients. So now we host, now we join. We will get our two players here in a second. And they already uh, changed the color to blue because 
this is um, implemented in the render function. And now, as soon as I shoot, bam, yes, we see it. They are changing to white. And this is obviously invisible, but this change of the color is now not synchronized. So it's calculated on both clients individually. So they needn't be uh, absolutely synchronized. And um, in the tutorial, they actually they uh, just said that uh, normally we are not interested in um, visual effects like sparks and this to be exactly synchronized. Um, but this must be decided on a per case base. So uh, looks good. So we can shoot. Bam, bam, bam. And yeah, this was lesson 105. And now we go to the final lesson. 106 and then this is the end of this tutorial but obviously first of all we need to add this to git again so git at all git status and only we only modified the player cs so it's a very very small lesson we adding this to git so that you can download the code if you like